Welcome back. Hi. For our final lesson, you are going to be printmaking big. What I mean by big is I'm actually using the 11 by 14 size of the Strathmore printmaking paper for majority of the prints that I'm creating in this lesson. And I start with printing um, using a jelly plate and also have a bonus video for you on creating a handmade paintbrush out of foam and chopsticks. And I'm going to take you through a process I like to call deconstructing layers, which means that I'm taking the printing plate and then doing work to create the image and then printing it on multiple pieces of paper. I deconstruct the prints by interpreting them in a whole new fashion by layering them on multiple pages. So I'm going to show you how I use some of my favorite tools, handmade stencils, found tools, and some of my stamps to create these fun and vibrant backgrounds with pops of color. And you'll notice that there's little bits of colors bursting and textures and a lot of these prints are in process. Some of them may be a final print but a lot of times what I like to do is take these pieces and either take them and create art journal pages or art journal covers or collage papers and you can just cut out bits and pieces of some of these prints to collage and add to other mixed media canvases. And then during the lesson, I'll also continue to build prints on some of the artwork from the previous lessons and show you how I do that by doing scraffito into the printing plate using stencils and my handmade hot glue stencils and just taking each one of these prints and adding them to my previous painted backgrounds. And you can see how I take just little bits and hints of some of the printing plates and add a nice pop of color over some of these other previous prints. And so that's one great thing about using a six by six plate is that you can you can create these little blocks of color on your pages. And then I love to create overprints that start to become kind of a great canvas for taking it to the next level. Here I've got about five or six layers. And now that this is dry, I could go back and take either pens or markers or maybe even oil pastels and do some mark making over the top or lettering. So a lot of these are meant for you to use in future projects. The idea is to just play and experiment with all of the techniques that I'm showing and really have fun with the process. Here is one of the prints that you'll see me building up. This is from the first lesson where I printed the foam stamp. And then through a series of stencil prints and some sprays, and then finally overprinting it a couple times, I finally got to a place where I like what's starting to happen here. And I can take this and you know use it as a journal page if I want to, if I fold it in half. Or I could just take bits of this and collage it into some of my other paintings. I wanted to share some of the printmaking tools that I'm using in this lesson. So I start out with teaching you how to build a simple and fun hand, handmade paintbrush. And this is out of chopsticks and foam. And then I'll move, I move to show you how I incorporate stencils, both ready-made stencils, and I'm using 
stencils from my new Stencil Girl line, and stamps. So I've incorporated stamping into the jelly plate, and then hot glue stencils. And again, you can find this tutorial in my book, Printmaking Unleashed, and on my blog. So sit back and get ready to have some more printmaking fun. Enjoy the lesson. See you later. Bye. For this lesson, I am going to be using, again, a variety of golden paints. Mostly the open, just because they work great for printmaking, they, they are wet longer. Some stencils, some scraping tools, I have a, a variety of tools here. I may not use all of them, but I just wanted to show you kind of what you could use. Um, some brushes, I've got some more scraping tools, and some handmade cards. I took old hotel room keys and just cut little notches out of them. And then my handmade brushes, and these were made out of chopsticks and a variety of foam and raffia and pipe cleaners. Super simple. My good old brayers and a variety of spray inks and then a jelly plate as the printmaking substrate and then my collaged papers that I created that can be used both as printing plates and as the actual base to print on and these were created with the heavyweight Strathmore printmaking paper and and I will be printing on the Strathmore Lightweight 300 series printmaking paper and then also 400 series printmaking paper. So sit back for some printmaking fun. Okay, so I am going to take my jelly plate out. I just keep mine stored in there so that it doesn't um, get ruined or smashed. And then I'm going to take off that bottom. And I have deli paper underneath here, so it's nice and it'll keep it in place. And then I'm going to take a piece of printmaking paper. Just grab a couple of pieces out of here. So I'm going to use a small printing plate and even though my paper is large I like to actually print around the paper so I I don't keep it registered where you could actually tape this down and like keep layering and doing the same print over and over but that's that's not how I work with the jelly plate so I'm going to show you how I create layers using this. So I'm just going to put a little bit of paint out on here. And again, I'm using the Golden Open and um, mixing it sometimes with the fluid colors if I don't have it in the open color. But I'm trying to primarily stay with the open colors because I want the paint to stay wet longer. So I have two brayers, and I'm going to roll this out on here, and I'm going to do two colors. I'll take a little bit of this other oops, fellow blue color, and. mix it. I want a little bit, I want to do kind of this green, teal, and orange, yellow inspired palette. So I want those to mix. I'm just going to go back and forth a little bit on there. So 
to get kind of that ombre look in between. So that's covered. And you can actually see now I've got this ombre brayer, which is kind of fun. And I can start with this because I don't want to waste that paint that's on there. So I'm just going to take one of my stencils and I want to print inside here. So because it's not a foam brayer, I'm not getting the full print, which is fine with me. Um, I, I don't mind that. I'm looking for my spray. I can also then spray this, Wait for a little bit more water in there, and then put this down over here. And with the dry brayer, just see if it'll pick up any more of that paint. And then I could also actually add in a little bit of color this way. So I can check to see what it looks like. If I like that, that's nice. And I could also roll this a little bit more to spread that color. Oops. Just gonna make sure you don't get the, I just lifted up the stencil, but that's okay. So that's another option. So you can do kind of both, but I like that little outline. So you can see just really quickly how you can create some interesting prints. And then I just take a little bit of plain water again and take the rest of this paint and roll it onto the surface here. So this is my first layer on this page. So you can see how you can get a lot of prints just from cleaning off your brayer. So and I could probably keep going if I sprayed that with water. And so it's a little bit of water and a little bit of paint. I'm going to do a quick resist on here. We'll pull that print on another piece of paper. So now I, I, I pulled out a piece of heavyweight printmaking paper. And I'm going to also just scribble into this. And I try try to do it really lightly because I don't want to ruin the jelly plate. So this is one of the reasons why I I don't use the jelly plate as much, just because I like to do a lot of scratching into the surface. And when you do that on the jelly plate, it sometimes can make, well most of the time it'll make, you know, an indention if you press too hard. But the great thing about the jelly plate is that you get really beautiful prints. And I didn't have to use a brayer or anything like that. So it really transfers the paint really well. So you can see where I scraped on there. There's still paint on, on that piece and I'm going to just go back over here and print it one more time and see if I can pull anything off of there before I add water or change the color. So I should be able to get another pretty good print. So you can see a little bit differentiation. It's not as perfect as the, uh, the first one, but you still get a good print. And then I'm going to do what I always do, spray water. I could actually spray another color on here just to change it a little bit. And when you do that, keep in mind the colors are going to mix. So you don't want to choose a color that's going to create mud. So I'm going to print this again over here. And so like I'm doing this where I have no kind of registration. So I just 
get a print wherever it's placed is where it's going to be placed. And that's kind of the fun about how I layer. I just like to create random pages. And so see that one has a lot of water and a lot of ink spray. So you can see the difference in the print, but you can still see the outline of the flower. So now that I've cleaned off most of that, I'm going to take another color and mix it in here. before I take off that stencil. And I still have a little bit of paint on here. And I'm gonna take another piece of paper, one of my other prints. So here, this one, or from the other lesson, it didn't quite show up as how I wanted it to. So I'm gonna take this and just overprint a portion of it. and pull it. So still not, it's still blending a little bit more, but that's okay. I needed a darker color. It's because it's the same Titan buff. And like, this is all trial and error. You just have to kind of not worry about the first layers because you can always paint over them. And so now you can see how you get half of the print. And there, you see that watermark? That's because I sprayed earlier. Shallow blue. So I always want to mix open with this. Like I said, it lets you work with this longer. And that turned out a lot greener than I wanted it to. But there's a lot of paint on there right now, so. I'm just going to leave it. And I'm going to pull this off and layer it on here since I know this is going to be dark and it'll be a nice contrast. I have to remember which side. Actually, I think there's paint on both sides, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this dark side on here. And then I'm going to take this piece and place this one on here and then I'll get two prints and both of my prayers I accidentally used both of my prayers so I just want to transfer all the rest of that paint onto both of these pages so I've got the print on top it has that kind of ombre look and then now you can see that's nice and dark and contrasted over the top of that. So I like that a lot better. And there's still paint on here where I can take this and just spray. On that. And then Do a quick, there's paint on here, so when I roll, I'll get more of that color on there. So that's why I always try and clean my, my brayers off onto other paper. Okay. So now I have this piece left on here, and I'm actually going to just do a little bit of drawing right into here. So I'm just using that as my guide. I have a rubber tipped scraper, so this will not ruin the surface. So this is one great thing about using this type of scraper on there. And then I can take that and go back to one of my prints for this first layer and 
print this over here. We'll do this one in the corner. And it's going to overlap with the other print that is there. And there you go. Okay, so I've got those first layers. I still have a little paint on there, so I'm going to take a little bit of water, spritz it, and just take another print. I'm just going to overprint another painting. So a little bit dark, it blended with the paint that was underneath there, but that's okay. Into another piece of paper. Okay, a little bit more paint. Roll these out. I'm going to mix it with what's left on here. I'm going to leave it kind of like that so I have that variation in paint. And then I'm going to grab one of my other scraping tools and just scrape a little bit of paint off of there. And then take another print. So right now, these pieces are kind of all monochromatic, kind of analogous colors. And I'll start to change the color palette in a little bit to overprint. But I want to build on top of some of the other prints from my previous lessons. So for this one, I'm going to just add a little bit of this to the corner. Pull that up so I get a nice contrast going there. And then maybe for this one here, I'll just add a little bit of it to the edge also. See what I get left. So that's going to have two slightly different colors. Oops because I pulled the first print and then that's from the second, so that's kind of fun. Let's see if we put it over here. So I overprinted my flower over there, and then I got to pull a little bit more of that up. Another one of my stencil. Leftovers. So this is the outside of the stencil. They come in two parts. So you get this and the inside. So this is the lily flower. And before I before I clean off that, I'm just going to take that print and see if I can pick up any more paint on this one. And we'll just put this one on the corner over here. So you get a little bit of that outline there of the flower. Another one of my stencils and a little spray and print that over here. So I want to smash this down because that stencil on the bottom has paint on it still. Let's see what I get. So a little bit of that one. And then I can take this. And not, not too much paint left on that back of this, but it's a nice print. So you can get kind of that masked shape over the top. That's fun. 
And there's still a little bit of paint on here. And let's see if I can get any more of that paint off of here. So a little bit. So I think I'm good with that color. So let me, I'm going to just clean the rest of this paint onto this paper here. 